Looking at some of the examples that relate to assignment three of week three, we're starting with the value contrast portion of color strategies. So in this example, we have this nice light value against this dark sky. And then on the reverse here, we have this lighter ground and a dark figure, both giving us different aspects of value contrast to work with. You know, something to consider as you work with your assignments. I want to go through these fairly quickly, but when we switch the, when this is switched to a grayscale, you see that much clearer. It's a it's a very clear image at this point. Uh, so these are things to consider as you're moving forward. Here the, the value difference is 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 very extreme. Remember that before in our software we can go to image adjustments levels and this would be this would really show up very well and again you can use that tool to help you see these differences in the contrast of value very similar to what we've done in those earlier weeks you know again when we switch this to grayscale you know, how light this is against some of these very strong darks not a lot of middle values to separate this differences uh, and the other one there were some of those middle values but the those differences between how bright that sun uh, moon was against that sky. So here there's something a little bit different going on. We have a little bit of play between these soft clouds echoed in the soft cotton against the more harshness of this dried up plant. You know, we, you, most of us have felt a dry leave, especially uh, if this is fall for you. Uh, you can feel those crumbly leaves and you're familiar with that. Most of us have that, uh, especially if you're from the north, you're going to be familiar with that feeling. Uh, and against, uh, you know, the softer blue sky that's most of us will consider fairly high in saturation against this low saturation. So there's a lot of play of back and forth between high saturation, low saturation, roughness, softness. You know, think about those contrast of ideas be along with those contrasts of values and colors. You know, these contrasts are all being intermingled in this idea and they and those also should be kind of coming across in your designs. So again, when we switch to grayscale, we see this contrast of value, very dark edges here against much lighter areas. The sky comes off as much darker against the lighter clouds. So here, a different type of contrast. We often consider the face very soft, has very rough edges, very hard, rigid face, very structured, geometric, kind of solid figure, almost sculpted. And then you have these kind of more aggressive, softer marks around it too. So there's still this type of contrast, again, shifts in value too. So think about how you're going to use those those plays against each other and that's something that can be incorporated. So you don't want just that value change. You also want to have the idea of, of contrast with that. Moving on to complementary colors. This is something you've all probably witnessed at some point in time. Many of you will call this that idea of where colors pop. Uh, it's, it's very common uh, that we, we've seen it. It's used in a lot of designs. Uh, and it also typically has some of that value easily associated with it. The yellows, as we've probably talked about at this point, lighter values, the blues are going to be a little bit darker, so you're going to automatically have that value. No reason you can't emphasize it again here. Notice the darker trees, uh, some of the tints used in here, some of the whites also to emphasize, offset those darker values. So think about how you're going to play those against each other. Uh, you know, also in this case, warm and cool. You know, temperature can become a can play in this as well. You know, use those things we've learned in the earlier lessons. Also incorporate those ideas. Build off of what you know. Uh, in this case, a little bit of a different approach. You have different ideas. We have these vertical geometric aspects going on. Uh, geometric structure here, more curvilinear against some softer organic elements. But we have this presentation element that you know you're, something's going to be presented here. Uh, but again, some warm and cool elements going on uh, to some degree, but not as much as you would expect. Some of you are going to consider this a little bit warmer in a magenta. Uh, but here, these are those transitional colors that we're looking at. With complements, do keep in mind though, you want them to be 180 degrees apart. You know, it's easy to consider this green and magenta, which, you know, initially that's where I was looking at, not considering this more of the yellow, green, blue, magenta. 
it's something that you do want to watch. But look at how you're playing things against each other. This is also layered in different, there's a background, there's a middle ground here, and then there's the foreground. So there's also that contrast of, of depth of image. And we're going to see that again here. We have a little bit more of that depth. And so color depth comes into it. So we have the warmer temperatures in the foreground, the cooler temperatures in the background, darker values in the background, lower saturations in the background, uh, warmer temperatures, lighter values. We have the lighter skin tones, the lighter flowers, uh, you know, higher saturation here of the dress. So think about that as part of your contrast of how you're going to use that as well. Uh, all of these elements can start to come into play when you work in, with these designs. You know, here we have you know, more of just focusing on the contrast of warm and cool, light and dark. You know, those elements can come into play just as easily. You know, a lot of different uh, range of saturation and value going on here. You know, the tints, very low saturation at times, especially as it moves very close to white. You know, something that can be considered. You know, obviously much more of a painting, not uh, quite as appropriate for some of our digital elements, uh, but it's to show you a range of value and saturation that can be achieved. Uh, we can achieve these this range just as easily. Obviously, again, depth of field going on here. We have that foreground, middle ground, background going on. You know, those elements are all available to us. But notice how much little of the red is used here. You know, it doesn't need to be evenly proportioned to have that contrast. That red comes out just by how little of it's used to balance off that blue. Uh, the cyan is easily balanced by that red. It, it, it comes out, it jumps out at us. Think about those things as you're working on this design. You know, that white is contrasted very well against those blue elements, especially against some of these darker shades of it. You know, again, a more seasonal approach from a traditional color wheel. Uh, you have some of these shades against the lighter tints here, contrast of value. Also, you know, looking at how we have a larger use of some of these darker colors against the lighter colors and how still they're balanced out. These really draw you in and and so look at how you can balance those colors. Uh, you know, whether you feel it's balanced or not, but that light the light tint of the moon here really can really help balance this image out. Uh, so it's look at those elements. You know, a seasonal approach is fine, whether you know it's Halloween, where we're heading towards Thanksgiving, Christmas, Valentine's Day, you know, Fourth of July, whatever it is, you're welcome to use those times of years that, that if you feel that you need that as inspiration. So again, not as much of these orange elements here against the blue, a little more in this uh, in the horizon here. Uh, that's fine. Look at this dark and light element, you know, balance of value in this sec section. You know, these are elements that may seem like they're small elements in part, in part, but that was one of those supplements that I sent out. It talks about small surprises, and sometimes a small surprise is enough to help with a composition that seems fairly simple. You know, this is just a simple horizon, but you know, what if it was cut off here and maybe it didn't have this little balance of light and dark? You know, would that change it for you? And that's the question you may want to ask yourself. So this one's a little bit cluttered for me, but think about this in a different context. Think about, you know, especially for those of you that have children and that wrapping paper, especially that first Christmas present that shows up a little bit early and your kids see that wrapper. They can pick that wrapper out no matter where you stick it. You stick it in the back of a closet and they'll see that little corner if it's not covered. Christmas wrapping paper is contrast against the normal presentation of your house. They see it, they smell it, they, I don't know what it is but they find it. And I mean, it lights up a room for them. You know, whatever this design is that's going on here, it touches a child like you can't imagine for those of you that don't have little kids yet. There is something about this that changes a child instantly and it just reaches out to them. Even if it's a poor Christmas paper pattern, that will grab them still. They just respond to it. It's, it's just one of those things that you sometimes just need to see it. Um, very interesting. So I think you know, in, in, in the correct context, this, this really shows. But here, value contrast, very clear. You have some color play. Again, complements has that pop. You know, the green against the red works very well. 
contrast of saturation, contrast against value. Uh, you know, these elements can play to get against each other very well. You know, again, saturation contrast, value contrast, warm and cool contrast can come together here. You know, some of you are going to perceive these more as yellows against some blues at times. Uh, you know, think about all the elements that you've learned and try to work those together as you move forward. You know, especially with a design something like this, you have smooth areas against rough edges. You know, you might imagine this as feeling very rough against your skin, against the very smooth areas such as this. Uh, you've got the very darks against the very lights. You know, there's a lot of visual contrast going in. It's something that appears very simple at first. And that's what, you know, these designs can be. They can appear very simple but have some of those subtle aspects of contrast be, be at play. And that's one of those deceptive parts of this assignment is some of these examples seem very simple and you may have just glanced over them, but there's typically a lot more going under the surface. So if you want to talk about these examples a little bit more, uh, let me know. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and then we'll, we'll talk about this more in the discussion area. Thank you.